This week we had a real estate market live stream event for the residents of the East Valley in Arizona. And today we're going to bring you the best moments of that live stream for a real estate market update today on State 48 Homeowner. Hi, I'm Kenny Klaus and this is State 48 Homeowner. We've got with us uh, from the Klaus team, uh, myself, uh, Scott Goyman, we've got Craig Klaus and Twyla Edwards, our two uh, specialists for 85212 and 85209. Uh, welcome to both of you. And uh, we've got Steve from Unity Home Loans. To kind of set the tone for, you know, our meeting today is, is really just taking it right. I mean, you know, we always like to know where our clients, our communities, people we've got to, like, where do you turn when it comes to mortgage or buying and selling the home with me, um, you know, do you go to the media? And unfortunately, members of the media, they're not experts on every topic. And a lot of times they're just reading the headlines or trying to get clicks or uh, eyeballs, so to say. Uh, do you go to the internet and do a Google search or, you know, maybe, uh, you know, your uncle or what is it, Craig, your your brother, sister, and boyfriend's ex-girlfriend that works in the yeah. cubicle next to you or something like that. So, um not to be, you know, cocky or brash, but really we, we spend all of our days helping others like you. So we know about loan programs and guideline changes. We know your markets. We know what it takes to sell a house. Uh, you know, we know how to help buyers, whether it's their first home or their 10th home, really just make it a memorable and a great experience. So um, definitely lean on family and friends for feedback and maybe a little bit on their experience, but we really like to position ourselves as industry and market experts. Um, and really, we kind of hope that you come to us to really make that final decision and help us guide you through buying a home, financing home, and selling. Yeah, and in a lot of cases, it's the biggest financial, emotional decision people make. And you know, instead of listening to people that aren't in that position, that aren't looking to buy or sell a home at this time, um, whose, their opinions are relevant. You know, this is what we do every day, you know, all day. So that's why I always say, just you know, try to try to trust the experts and uh, and that and get your data from the right people. Well, and things change so fast. <clears throat> we watch it every week, so we know things change so fast. So what was good advice six months ago may not be good advice today. So we have had a lot of questions on the NAR settlement. And so uh, we do want to uh, bring that up and, and chat about that. And the uh, the changes went into effect uh, earlier this month. I think the biggest one for buyers is now you you know having to sign a contract <laughs> with, with an agent, um, even to view a home. Um, I, I think that's probably going to be the biggest challenge for our industry and for the public to get used to. Um, at least from my perspective, that's kind of what I feel, Twyla, how do you feel, or what do you think? No, I think it's, that's definitely it. I, but I think it's the conversation we have up front. You can't just go, you know, we can't just go show a house now. You do right. have to sign an agreement, even if it's a one day show agreement for that particular house. But unless it's an open house, that's going to be your only way of just looking at a house without signing some sort of an agreement with an agent. So I like to send it to people ahead of time so that they have time to read it and, and know what what's going on. But it's it's something that uh, we've got to do. Uh, real estate agents do get fined if uh, they don't do it. And if, uh, you know, it's in the thousands, by the way, and if they don't do it enough times, they lose access to the MLS. You know, from the seller's side, right now it's kind of open in terms of Buyers right now, most of the time, their agent is submitting a form that you know is asking for how much co uh, property compensation they would add, they would want. And so, as a seller, then we just look at the total net of the offer. So, bottom line is, the the way we get there is different, but the changes aren't really the the, the process is different, but we're going to have the same result. Yeah. yeah, and one of the things that was in the settlement was that you know people were kind of mistaken that there was a one absolute uh, commission that was uh, all across the country. And I think the number that was thrown out was six, that everywhere, everywhere, that was what it was. And it's, it's, it's negotiable. And people ask, you and know, it's always is, been negotiable. It's always been negotiable. It's always um, been market dependent. And so for the 90 days prior to August 1st, uh, just so that people have a figure on what things looked like, 
uh, really it was kind of all over the place as far as where it was, but it really did hover right around two and a half um, uh, for uh, the the commission paid to buyer agents by the seller. But if people have any questions, uh, <clears throat> this is a great video that we did with uh, Rick Collins, one of our top agents on the Klaus team. We did this uh, just a couple weeks ago on the State 48 Homeowner Podcast. Uh, you can uh, jump on if you are on YouTube right now. It is on this channel. And go check out this video. It's uh, don't sign the new buyer agreement without watching this. But we do walk through exactly what the NAR settlement is, all the changes that took place, and we dive in uh, with a little extra detail than what we covered on uh, today. Hey everyone, this is Kenny Klaus with Klaus Team Real Estate Solutions. We know there's a lot of confusion in today's market, whether it's billboards, TV, radio, you know, mail, everyone's trying to get your attention. They offer one lane, where at the Klaus Team, we have over 20 different programs. We can help you navigate through to find out what's best for you. And remember, we work for you, they work for themselves. We're here to represent you and make sure you have the best experience possible. Visit us at klausteam.com slash call us first. So Craig, why don't you talk to us about uh, the local market here in the East Valley? <clears throat> yeah, so this is for the entire MLS, um, basically from the Cromford report. In August, closings just under 6,000 that were down 9% from July of last year. I'm oh, sorry, I should have said July closings, but um, down from that. And then um, they were down 9.5% from last month. So Overall volume is down. Um, it, it, that's been happening and we're starting to see inventory increase a little bit. Um, we had and then it kind of dropped again and now it's starting to increase. Um, the, the resale median sales price was up 1.1% year over year, unchanged from last month. The average sales price was up 5%. We're currently about three and a half months supply. So we're moving real close to a balanced market. Some of the areas in the Valley are. Um, the average days on market is 82. It's been pretty consistent with that. And this is kind of just the, the overall thing. So as of nine, September 5th, we had a, a little over 18,000 homes on the market, just under 7,000 under contract and just over 5,600 um, sales per month. Again, month supply is on there. Average list of sales price is right around 97.8 for the value or for the valley. The average monthly sales price is right around 579. Um, we kind of broke it down for 85209 and 85212. You've seen active inventory kind of stay the same there. Listings under contract as well. Um, sales per month down a little bit. Um, still doing all right, 2.3 months supply, so still doing well. And then 85212, we'll see that active listings gone up a little bit, not a whole lot. Um, and everything else is pretty well, you know, there's, there's still some new builds in 85212 and the new, new home market is, uh, has been doing very well and carrying a lot of the market right now. Uh, this yeah. one I saw today that I just thought, you know, how, how much does home ownership mean and how much does it mean over time? And, you know, home prices up 58.4% in the last five years, over 319% in the last 30 years. So just something I thought wanted to share just again about the value of home ownership. That's pretty astonishing to look at the last five years. And one of the things that comes up still is, is some concern about foreclosures. And, you know, we started to see a little bit of an uptick in the Valley. I say a little, I think we had a hundred right now, um, which is nowhere near anywhere to where we're at before, but compared to the past, um, you're going to start to see headlines and things on that. 39% on their home free and clear. Another 30 percent of over a 50 percent equity, um, and so you're looking at what about 70 percent of homes have at least 50 percent of equity. Well, now, like that previous thing said, though, if you've owned it for the last five years or so, if you right. haven't pulled money out, you should be in that percentage there. So, well, correct. <clears throat> and a large portion of it is too is during. I mean, for almost a two-year period, you had one out of every four buyers was a cash buyer or was a cash transaction. And they, you know, they paid cash for the home. There was no financing involved, especially with that much equity in most homes because banks aren't going to foreclose. They're just, you know, people can sell their home and, and get out. And that's the key, too, is people need to be aware of that because we're not, uh, we're just not seeing, you know, we don't want people to not take advantage of that and have somebody have it foreclosed on to lose all that equity either. Right. 
Well, and that's where we're saying, ask us a question. We are all very non-judgmental. I think sometimes people we've talked about, the easiest way to deal with a problem is to not deal with it. So by the time we get the phone call, they're already in that really close to foreclosure process. So if you're in that, like Steve said, you know, your debt ratios and things like that aren't working, let us know. He might be able to help you refinance or we can help you sell it before you get foreclosed on and at least recoup some of your money you have in there. Homes are still selling, like I said, just under 6,000 last month. And so if it's priced right, it presents well, it should say it will sell. But it's the patience. Mm -hmm. We've all, in the last couple of years, what we've seen, um, things move so quickly. So to sit on the market right now, people feel like it's forever. And we're yeah. like, this is going back to kind of a normal market, right? And, this, and I, we do. I mean, as agents, you're like, oh, I didn't, you know, it didn't sell that first weekend or we didn't get a showing this week, you know, or something. But understanding that's it's just the market. I mean, there's fewer buyers right now. Even with rates coming down, we, you know, we can get more into the Fed later, but there's a lot of belief out there that when the Fed cuts rates next month, next week, that that's going to lower mortgage rates. It's already happened. Let's talk about rates, man. Um, I mean, really just the purchasing power and activity is really starting to pick up. Um, we've actually seen rates, you know, based off of today's market close, your average 30 year fix closed today at about 6.22%. Um, I'll get a little bit more detail what that entails, but really what's happening right now is more buyers are able to come to the market. And again, a lot of these numbers are going to be national and on averages, but According to the Manger, the Mortgage Bankers Association, it, you've got five million plus potential home buyers become eligible with every one percent drop from the previous rate highs. And so October of twenty twenty three, we hit about eight percent on average for a thirty year fix. And we've already we hit seven percent and now we're at six percent. Um so well, and it was like seven percent at the end of July or, or middle of July, what I believe when I was looking today. Yeah. So it's come down quickly. It's it's come down tremendously. So we're really, I mean, it's it's really just kind of increasing the buying power, bringing more people to market. I mean, we started the year thinking that there was going to be this is the chart thinking what was going to happen in 2024, and as you can see, we haven't had a reserve rate cut yet until September 18th. So um, that's going to be the next cut. That's next Wednesday. It's going to be at least a quarter. Um, they're now starting to head that it's going to be a half point cut. Uh, the Fed's going to get really aggressive. I don't know that that's quite going to happen, um, but there's a 100% chance that the Federal Reserve is going to begin cutting the Federal Reserve rate on September 18th. So what that really does for the market is, is mortgage rates already kind of have priced that in because Powell's already kind of led the, led the charge. We know there's going to be a cut. Um, so it's already been kind of priced in, but now what the market is starting to do is look at other economic indicators going forward and how many more cuts is the Fed planning on or are they anticipating? And, and right now um, they think, you know, the market is anticipating that the Federal Reserve is going to cut once in September, another quarter point cut, in November and then a quarter point cut in December and then four to five cuts in 2025, which that being said would bring the Federal Reserve rate into that three and a half to 3.75% range, which would then bring mortgage interest rates into the low fives on a 30 year average, bringing us down almost another full point. All right, let's talk about the predictions. <clears throat> So the experts are saying the mortgage rates are going to come down on Steve. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Mortgage interest rates are trending in the right direction, and they should continue to trend in the right direction, um, regardless of, you know, what happens in, you know, the upcoming election. Um, all the economic trends are really kind of showing us that this is where rates are headed. Uh, again, you know, obviously you're going to see the Mortgage uh, Bankers Association going to be a little bit more aggressive looking ahead. Um, than NAR, uh, but they're right in line with fanning the expectations that we'll finish next year somewhere in the fives. And depending on how quickly the Federal Reserve cuts interest rates or if they make any larger cuts. So it should definitely be helpful for home buyers going forward. 
And that's hard to predict because, if you know, I don't think anybody, even you would have said July 22nd, that by September, you know, 10th, we'd have 6.22 rates when it was 7%. No, absolutely not. No. There are so many factors, it's really hard to predict. This, you know, the, the, as far as home sales for 2025, these are some of the kind of Fannie Mae, Matt Mortgage Bankers, and NAR's prediction. You know, this is a, be the third year in a row that will break the record for the least amount of home sales because um, it was 2022, then 2023 broke that. Now 2024 will break that. Um, we expect that to change in 2025. Uh, there's been a lot of buyers sitting on the sideline for a long time. There's been a rate lock effect for sellers because when they were 8% and they're sitting on their 3%. Um, so we expect that to change. And I think locally it could be as early as the fourth quarter um, and potentially if not into the early in the part of the first quarter, I think we're going to really start to see activity and, and transaction counts pick up as more buyers enter the marketplace. And then we see home prices coming up. Yeah, and home prices, again, like this is nationally. I think we're always out, typically outpacing nationally. I, 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 you know, I think that the first half of next year, we're going to get a majority of our appreciation. Um, and, I, you know, we'll see. I, I think it's going to be higher than what they're showing here of the average of all 10. Um, but again, that's nationally. I think locally we'll be closer to the four to five or probably three and a half, four range. I would say if you're a buyer, getting out now is a great time because as we just talked about, it looks like next year things will be picking up. Prices will be going up. Interest rates will be better. So why not get in now if interest rates go down, refinance then, but you're ahead of everyone else who's waiting for those rates to go down and we get into multiple offers and going over appraisal and waiving inspections and anything like that again. From the seller's perspective, again, it's patience, but I always say the right time to sell is when it's right time for you. Turn to time a market like this has never been successful. Um, and I think that if, you know, we know what the market is today, I don't know what it's gonna be like in 90 days. We have good expectation, but we don't know. So I know what it's like today, that's how I, would answer it is when you're ready, you're ready. And uh, there's a lot of options for uh, home buyers. If uh, people want to reach out, you can uh, just reach out to us at cloudsteam.com slash first steps. So the first steps, obviously, <clears throat> we've kind of talked about, we work with great lenders like Steve, right? Because we want to find out what you can truly qualify for. The last thing we want to do is go look at houses and find out you don't qualify for that. We found your dream house and it's outside of... <clears throat> what your budget is. So let's talk to Steve, get everything in line that we need to do. Um, I love our buyer consultations, which I've always done. So this NAR lawsuit just really made us go, okay, everyone needs to be doing these now. Let's sit down, let's meet at the office and go through what's important to you. Find out what your criteria is. What area of town do you wanna be in? How many bedrooms do you need? Is a two story okay? And fit it into your budget. Then we can go do the fun stuff, right? We have the pre-qualification, we know what houses you like. So we start that whole process, <clears throat> negotiate through it for you, get you the best deal that we can. And sometimes we've said, sometimes the deal is winning the house, right? Right. Um, and then moving on, I just had a buyer consultation a little while ago today, and I was talking about all the steps for the buyer of a buyer inspection, um, loan contingencies, all of those things in there. So there's a lot that happens in that escrow period, but I think the home inspection is super important to do. Moving on from there is keeping in touch with your lender to get us through the process. If you've got questions, you want to dive in deeper, reach out to us at klausteam.com or 480-354-7344. Thanks for spending time with us this week at State 48 Homeowner, the ins and outs of owning an Arizona home. You can connect with us for more information, submit topics you'd like us to further discuss. You can see relevant videos, give us feedback, answer your real estate questions and more at state48homeowner.com.